Hey everyone, so in this video I'm going to be talking about JavaScript loops and some more complex logic and how you can use these to create uh, more interesting programs in JavaScript. So in the last video I actually created a for loop, um, but in this video I'll explain more thoroughly how they work. So a for loop basically looks like this, and there are three parts to it. The initial expression, the terminating condition, and the steps. And so what this initial, initial, and so what this means is um, you're trying to loop through a number of things, starting from some position, stopping at some position, and how you're stepping through. So for example, you want to loop from 0 to 10, ta um, taking every other step. So 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, or if you want to just go 0 through 10, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc., uh, if you want to start from 10 and go to 0 and skip every third number, you can do things like that um, right here within a for loop. So the basic for loop that you'll probably see in a lot of places is var i or some variable equals 0. i is less than some number, so 10 i++. plus plus. So this i++ plus plus is actually taking i and adding 1 to it after every step. So what we can do here is... So we'll create an empty array, and we'll add i, we'll push i to it, so air push i. So we're actually, we're pushing 0 all the way to 9, because it's stopping at 9, because uh, it stops once i is equal to 10. And then if we print r, we get 0 through 9. So this is just a really basic for loop. So now we can do things like i equals i plus 2. So we're looping every we're looping through every second element between 0 and 10. 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. Perfect. And if we wanted to include 10, we could just do i is less than or equal to 10. And now we include 10. Uh, so we can also go through the reverse um, in the reverse order. So i equals 10 and then i is greater than 0. But now we can't add 2, but we subtract 2. So we get 10, 8, 4, 10, 8, 6, 4, 2, equal to 0, and we get 0. So this is a really basic for loop where if you know how long something is and how many times you want to loop through something, the for loop is your best bet. There's another type of loop that's really popular, and that's a while loop. And that looks like this. A while loop is good if you're not sure how many times you're going to iterate through something, how many times you'll loop through something. Um, so you want to keep doing it until some condition is met. So a while loop takes one condition right here. And this is the condition to make the, um, the loop go. So you can do something like while true. So if you do this, this will actually never terminate because it's checking if this condition is true. But we're passing in true. So this, will, this, this loop will just run... Um, will run forever and your browser, your uh, window might actually crash. So we can do something a little easier to manage. So we'll do something like, let's try var counter equals zero. And we'll do while counter is less than 10. While counter is less than 10, we'll push, like in the other loop, we'll push counter. So counter is originally equal to zero, here it is, equal to zero, and we're going to do this, we're going to do the, um, we're going to perform the statements in this loop until counter is equal to 10. Uh, but we're never actually changing counter, so usually within a while loop you need to change some condition. So we'll add one to counter after every iteration of the loop. And then when we print error, we should also get zero through nine, uh, because we're not checking if it's equal. And here we get 10. So this is another good example of um, a really another really simple example of a loop. Uh, a common a common uh, way to utilize loops is something like looping through an array. So we have something like var air equals one to a hundred and four. And now you want to loop through each element in the array, and you want to I don't know um, you want to subtract one from it. So var i equals zero. So we're setting a variable i equal to zero. 
i is less than the length of the array, which is um, called using the length function, and then i plus plus. So i is less than array length. So now what you want to do is you could you have access to each element in the array by using array indexing. So error of i. And now we want to subtract one from it. So error of i equals error of i minus one. And then we print r. So we get 0, 1, 99, 3, which uh, checks out. So the, here's an ex a good example of a for loop. We covered while loops. Uh, there are also some other things you can do uh, to control these loops. So you can do something uh, like use a continue or a break statement. So a break statement breaks out of the loop completely. So let's just say we're looping through the array. And if we hit the number 100, we want to completely stop. So we'll do something like we'll keep we'll keep subtracting one, but if array of i equals hundred, we want to completely break out. So what will happen is this will be this will turn to zero, this will become one, and then these two numbers won't change. So zero, one, one hundred four, like I said. So the break statement completely breaks out of the loop and stops any of the um, um, operations within the loop. On the other hand, if you want to skip 100 and then just go on to 4, you can use a continue statement. So in this case, we'll get 0, 1, 100, but we'll get 3 here. 0, 1, 103. Perfect. Uh, so the continue and break statements are really useful to know when you want to control uh, what elements will be um, accessed within an array or within an object you're looping through. And you can also loop through strings. So you can have there straight equals hello world and now we're not actually looping through the array uh, we're looping to the string so string length will be about 0 1 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 12 I think we can actually just string length. 11 okay so the length of the string is 11 so what we can do now is we can uh, change each character in the string. So you can't directly modify the string, but we can actually convert it into an array. So we can do something like array there are equals string split. And so now we get an array of each character. So now we can loop through this array and modify the characters. So we can change, um, if we encounter a capital letter, we'll change it to lowercase. So that's something we can do. So if array, so now we're accessing each element within the array, and here's how the array looks. So if error i equals, to check if it's uppercase, we'll actually check if it's equal to itself uppercase. So if error i equals, and then to uppercase is the function in JavaScript. So now we'll do error i equals itself, and now we'll convert it to lowercase. So now we loop through it and we check for capital letters and if we find one we convert it to lowercase and now we'll return this array joined into a string. So here we are splitting it into an array and here we're joining this array into a string. Uh, whoops, so we don't need a return statement, we can actually just print it and we get hello world. So we successfully converted uh, the capital letters to lowercase letters.